Welcome. This is Grumpy Joe, and I'm going to explain how I fly the Hummingbird helicopter in King of the Hill. Now, this isn't going to be some finely edited video with with uh, slick graphics and uh, cool sound effects. It's going to be down and dirty, uh, just raw, uncut, just like Grumpy himself. But the difference is, I'm not uh, just going to show you the standard, you know, uh, bank left, pull back on the stick, chop throttle, and say a prayer and hope you land type of video. No, I'm going to get down in the weeds and talk about everything and, and the important stuff that isn't touched on in all the other videos. Settings, uh, exponential for control movements, graphic settings, and, and more importantly, um, how to coordinate all the controls to perform a fast, aggressive, and precise landing in the helicopter. Um, if you've ever flown with me or seen any of my videos, I'm, I'm smooth, fast, and precise. And it, it does no good to be fast and smooth if you're not precise. Because at the end of the day, you want to land uh, where you want, not where the helicopter is going to tell you to land. Uh, so with that, let's jump in helicopter and we'll start. All right. Uh, forewarning, this is going to be a, a slow and methodical video. And guys that are already pilots, you can, you can skip ahead. But I'm basically starting this as if you, you've just got Arma or you just want to start flying hummingbirds. Um, so it's going to be a grind, but bear with me. A um, couple things. My suggestion, only fly first person. This is the view you have. I, I don't use a head tracker uh, system. Um, I'm, f I'm flying using my living room TV, and, and the head tracker won't work for the distance I I'm sitting at. So here's my setup on how I can fly, and I think it will help a lot of people fly. Um, just starting out. First thing. Double tap the negative key. It's going to expand your field of view. So that's it. Keep that view set. Don't adjust it up or down with your arrow keys. Just keep it set. You'll see the tops of your toes. So what's this, this is going to do, and we're going to get this later on, but we're going to do nothing but left-hand turns uh, for combat landings. And, and the reason being, when you look at the screen, to the left you can see the, the, the open door on, on the pilot side. As you're doing your combat turn, you're going to be looking out that door, theoretically through your peripheral vision, to spot to spot your mark. Okay, so you're going to need that expanded field of view. Now, if you're trying to do a right hand landing turn, if you, if you just look on the screen to the right, you're going to have a bunch of garbage there. You've got the other pillar looks huge. Um, you're limited view, and without head tracker IR, it's difficult to do that that turn. I'm going to be honest with you. The other thing that's difficult without head tracker IR is the forward flare landing. And you're going to see videos on YouTube on how to do the forward flare landing. That's great if you've got head tracker IR where you can uh, manipulate your view to look down to spot the ground. But when you're doing a forward flare landing, you're basically looking at the sky. And you've got to guesstimate looking at the buildings on how high you are up the ground and when you need to level and, and punch punch uh, the throttle to, to halt your descent. But that's neither here nor there. I'm going I'm to get you rolling on how to do consistent, fast, smooth, and precise combat lines. And we're just going to focus on a left hand, left hand turn. All right, next thing you want to do, hit Control M. That's going to pop up the uh, little GPS map there. Now, when you first do that, that, that map's going to populate a little lower. It's going to it's going to be about uh, down in, into that field of view. And what you got to do is go into settings and, and change the display so that map populates on that pillar. Now this is going to be key because you don't want to uh, obscure your view when you're flying. All right, now for the biggest secret that Grumpy Joe has. And the question I get most often, 
what do you use to fly? All right, I'm, I'm giving up the ghost today, fellas, and I hope you appreciate it. And this all goes back to, you know, what works for you. So I don't use a mouse. I don't use a joystick. I don't use uh, Xbox controller. What I use is this, the Tyrannus. Now, if anybody is familiar with RC planes, the Tyrannus FR Sky is a remote control transmitter for RC planes. Now, how did I come to this conclusion? I, I, I've tried the mouse. Uh, I'm too twitchy. I, I don't have a good position that I can sit. Uh, had a joystick throttle. Um, that worked really, really good, but I didn't have the precision uh, control. I had more of a floaty style. And uh, I even tried the uh, Xbox and PS4 controller for that matter. And what I, what I came back to time and time again is my RC transmitter. Now, if you're not familiar with it, it it's got two gimbal sticks. Left side, traditionally for flying planes, is uh, throttle up and down and rudder left and right. And the right side gimbal is left and right aileron roll uh, forward and back elevator for your pitch. How that translates into Arma 3. The, the left joystick I use for my um, cyclic, you know, and I have it set up like this. I push forward on the right gimbal on my transmitter. That's cyclic forward, you know, pitch the nose down for the helicopter. Pull it back, pitch the helicopter back. Uh, push left, helicopter rolls left, push right, so on. Okay, you get it? The left side. Uh, up and down is the collective. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it throttle for the video. You know, throttle up, throttle down. It's just easier for me. Um, left stick, left is the tail rotor. You know, left pedal, push to the left. Uh, push the stick to the right, right pedal. You're gonna have to find a system that works for you. You know, whether you're using a, a mouse, a joystick, or, or a you know a game controller, Xbox controller. But the controls are, are the same once you set them up. Uh, you know, I'm going to be talking about throttle up, throttle down, you know, zero, 100, 50%. That's basically going to be it right there for throttles. I'm going to say uh, left pedal, left pedal. That that's, that's swinging the nose of the helicopter to the left, you know. And we're going to, I'm going to describe this when we're flying, but I'm just getting, giving you a heads up. Here's the takeaway. It's very easy compared to the other methods for me personally to fly with the RC transmitter. And it's literally connected by, by a cable. You can use uh, Bluetooth dongles if you want to, I believe. But it, it's very easy for me to be precise with these controls. We'll touch on that more later. The, the, the next part I want to talk about, though, is, is this, and it's the customize. And this, this is a topic that's not even touched on on the other videos. Click on Customize, go to Show. This whole area right here is very important. This one up here for the Dead Zone, also important. But let's go, let's go, you know, control by control. So right now, this is my throttle. Throttle all the way down, I've got negative 100, throttle all the way up 100. This, in my opinion, is exponential. And, and what that is, in layman's terms, just the simplest terms when you're flying RC craft, is how much you move the stick proportionally how much it moves the control. So theoretically, if, if, if my throttle, which I'm moving right now, was connected to a, a, a literal coll uh, collective control on a helicopter, you know, the thing you lift up on for your power. All the way down is, all the way down, all the way up, all the way up. It, it's, it's a exponential of one, meaning it's, it's linear, okay? 
I move it. I move it one inch on my stand. It moves one inch on the collective on the helicopter. I'm gonna st I'm gonna stay on the left side of my transmitter. We're gonna go down to the the pedals, you know, the tail rotor. This one you can't change. This one is always stuck at one, which is fine. But li literally, as I move it, it's 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 moving proportional. I'm gonna touch on sensitivity in a bit, but. I'm going to jump over to the uh, basically the flight controls of the um, cyclic. Right now I'm pushing up and down, you know, pitch, pitch the helicopter forward, pitch the helicopter back. I've got this set almost as, as an exponential of 1.9, meaning as I move it one inch, it's almost going to move, you know, two times that distance. Okay. <clears throat> what that's going to do is it, it, it's gonna basically accentuate your movements. And if you if you bump this up to three, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's it's gonna be uncontrollable, uh, almost. I mean, you, you you move it one inch, it's moving three inches. You know, so you're getting these wild swings. Okay. S sensitivity, al almost in the same same path as the exponential. But what you what you find is a sensitivity, it, it, it increases, we're, we're going to stick with the up and down, it, it increases the throw, but it's a, it's a smoother increase, you know, it's not like, it, it, you know, you move it one inch, it goes four inches, but as you're moving it, it's, 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 it, it, I guess, flowy, it's more flowy. It, the, the takeaway is, you need to play with these numbers and what works with you. You know, you might start with ones on everything. The, the, the important one is the cyclic. You might start on ones. And you're going to find it, it's it's slow. It's doggy. I, I'm drifting all around. I, I can't correct it. Just take incremental steps. You know, boom, boom, boom. This is, you know, or feel free to copy it and use these. That's fine, too. I, I almost started at these settings, quite honestly. And it's, it's probably safe to do. Safety with the sensitivities. You know, I've, I've played with these a little bit and here, here's how you can really see those sensitivities is as I'm moving, this is my, uh, cyclic, right? I'm moving it to the right. Okay. I hit a hundred right there, right there. I still have a quarter inch of play. You see what I'm saying? If I dial the sensitivity down, I, I, let's say I go right here. Okay. I hit a hundred there. And I've got an eight. Uh, I've got only an eighth of an inch of play. So if I go, you know, basically drop it to zero. It hits a hundred, right at the end of the throw on my stick. You see what I'm saying? So I guess another way to sum up sensitivity is it it, it shortens your throws. So instead of, instead of having to move my stick to the right to get full lockout to the right one inch, I only have to move it three quarters of an inch. And you, you don't want to be, and the reason that's important too is you don't want to be slopping your sticks left and right, left and right, left and right, trying to find, you know, you're getting these big throws. You want to be precise, you know, and I'm doing this on the left hand, but you, you know, like 35, you know, 40. If you if you're flipping to 100 back and forth and back, your your helicopter's gonna be flopping flopping like an injured bird, quite honestly. Um, dead zone. Here's a pro tip right here, guys. I, I, I don't even know how to get into it, quite honestly. This this truly is the key to landing, or one of the keys. I'm gonna jump over to my throttle. Okay. Moving up and down, up and down. Dead zone. So here's how dead zone comes in play. Here's, here's my throttle right in the middle. It's showing zero. In the game, that's a hover. This is a negative 100. You got no power to, to your rotors. You're, you're dropping. Here's a positive 100, full power. Here's zero. The, the best way I can describe this, if you're, if you're flying keyboard and you hit nothing, it's, it's in essence set to this, where if you touch nothing, you're going to hover. But as far as it goes for um, flight sticks and, and transmitters, the RC transmitter that I'm using, here, here's here's the key. 
and I'm letting the genie out of the bottle here. I don't even know if I should be saying this. This dead zone for the throttle, this is critical. So what that does is increases the area where I can have my stick positioned and the helicopter will be in a hover. So what do I mean? I'm, I'm coming in, coming in hot, got my landing spotted. I, I'm gonna get this later, but I got my chattel, uh, throttle chopped to zero. I'm anticipating contact with the ground. I bring my throttle up and I and I push it to the, the hover position because you don't need more power to stop a descent. You need to have your power set to hover or more to stop a descent. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. You, you're coming in for a landing and you're dropping, you're, you're speed scrubbing, you're dropping, dropping, dropping. And now you're saying, hey, grumpy, you got to stop. You're going to crash. Boom. Pop it to pop it to hover. Okay. How do you find hover setting? You don't want to go too high because you'll get like a bounce. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll hover for a second. You'll, you'll take off and guys are left on the strut. You know what I'm saying? How do you get it to hover without looking at your, at your controller? You set the de dead zone like this. So you've got a range in the center stick position where you don't have to be dead nuts precise to find the hover, you know, you're just getting a general area and you're quickly moving it there. Boom, boom. I'm not even looking right now and I'm hitting that hover. And that for me, that's about 10 degrees plus and minus on my controller. So my, my stick can be dead center or plus or minus 10 degrees. And it's, I'm still within that hover zone. I'm moving it right now. That's, that's the that's the genie out of the bottle right there, guys. All right, so I'm gonna move on from here over to my um, vehicle movement, and just so you can visually see, I guess, my setup here. Like I said, I'm, I'm using the uh, Free Sky FR Sky. Tyrannus Q X7 controller. Now, a little backstory. I, I bought this controller with a uh, drone simulation software in order to get into uh, five inch uh, quads, flying five inch quads. And, and the transmitter could be set up. So it it uh, sends out no no radio signal, but it, it internally you can just connect it with a cable usb to like a, a mini usb to your computer so you can practice flying drones well i took that controller and just transitioned it into armor 3 and it, it, it was easy to set up and here's here's my settings like i was talking about cyclic forward turn a stick you know z plus axis it's the right hand stick cyclic backward i pull pull the stick down Cyclic left, cyclic right. Collective raise. That's when I'm when I'm talking collective. It's it's gonna be power, power raise, power lower. Um, I think the other ones are just the stock settings. All right, I'm back in heli. I'm gonna fire it up, and I'm gonna touch on really quick. Uh, my my thoughts on the dead zone of the throttle, really quick, and just to reinforce how important it is. So we'll just we'll just let it uh, go to full power, let it climb. And I'm gonna go with hover. And this is an auto hover. I just pop my sticks as close as I can to get to center. And by having a bigger dead zone, I don't have to be precise. I'm moving my throttle up and down right now. And my by having that dead zone, it it does you know it recognizes a bigger area to throw it in the hover. Now if I didn't, if I was didn't have that big dead zone I'd be bobbing trying to find the exact center of my flight stick throttle control so that's where you need to bump up that dead zone so you can just approximate and it, and it goes there all right so let's let's get into the landing stuff this enough nonsense here pull up the map pick a point I recommend you pick a point every time I still do I'm not consistent enough quite honestly to get a spot landing just based on map knowledge. Okay, pick the spot right here. Why did I pick this? We got buildings on both sides. We got dirt. It's going to be a soft drum landing. Um, some protection for the guys. 
We see the mark out there. Okay, it's 2.2 kilometers out. What I'm looking for is I'm making my run. It's going to be full throttle, low to the ground. At about 600 kilometers, or 600 meters out, the throttle goes to zero. Now, this is for flat ground. If you're going downhill, there's some maps you're flying downhill, chop the throttle to zero at 700. If you're going uphill, maybe 500. You see what I'm saying? You got We're going to be carrying momentum and using that uh, momentum in the final phase of the flight to the landing. Um, so full speed, 600 meters out, chop throttle to zero, be offset to the right. So I'm not going to fly straight at that point. I'm going to fly off to the side a little bit because at the end, I'm going to initiate a left bank and left pedal. And what that's going to do, it's going to create a decreasing radius turn coupled with the descent that's how you're going to get your your combat landing it's going to be descending left turn type of a you know decreasing radius turn you know your your turn is not going to be a perfect circle for that landing. it's going to tighten up as you get closer as your speed is bleeding because if you, if, you, if you don't tighten it up you're gonna you're gonna follow the sky sideways um, at the end we're gonna level out punch you know and bring the throttle up to the hover the midpoint and that's gonna uh, s stop our descent. So let's just try it and see what happens here. I'll try to talk it through as we go, but I find as I'm talking and flying, it's, it's hard to do. So full throttle, offset to the right, landings to the left. You know, rooftop, treetop, wire, top level, about 25 meters. Okay, we just turned a kilometer, 900, 800. 700 600 now throttles at zero start a slight arc left pedal pull back on the stick to maintain altitude left pedal left stick pull back on the stick pull back on the stick full left pedal full of pedal full back on the stick left bank level just like that right there no that's a little slow while talking i'm going to come back out and try it again And I'm going to go at a kilometer just so I can build up some speed. But you, you, you saw the dynamics there, okay? And, and the, the key is the coordinating the left, left stick, left pedal, tail rotor, and left bank, which can't keep pulling the bank because you're going to roll right over. So you set your bank, bank angle and pull back on the stick, okay? And pulling back on the stick is, is maintaining your altitude as you're decelerating, and it's, it's slowing you down too. It's tightening your turn up. There we go, 600, I'm at 450 already. So I got plenty of speed. Left left pedal, full left pedal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to slow down more. Pull back on the stick, back on the stick, back on the stick. Full left pedal still. Looking for my spot, looking for my spot. Left bank, bring it up, boom. All right guys, I, one thing I'm having trouble verbalizing, I guess, is when to bring up the throttle. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a run here and just, just talk explicitly throttle right now I've got full throttle but um, you just got to get some runs in and some practice to determine when you need to punch it up or bring it up for that matter if you're coming down slow but it, it just it's something time will bring to you but let's run through it again we got 600 meters uh, throttle at zero completely at zero little bank little back stick to keep my altitude left pedal left pedal full left pedal right now zero throttle zero throttle looking for my spot left bank back throttle up throttle up right there um, not sure how that's conveyed in the video guys but you got to get a feel for it there's going to be times when you're coming up you're coming up short and you, you're pun you punch the throttle you know 50 percent like if you're coming up short bring it to 50 percent it's going to be hover and you're going to be gliding but It'll, it'll buy you some time, but it gets a little sloppy, okay? If, if you're coming in hot, that's when you're going to get more aggressive on your controls, your banks, and you're pulling back on your stick, like right now, you know? And one of the ways you bleed speed if you're coming in hot, and I'll, I'll try to demonstrate it here on this one, is you got to get aggressive with a, the left bank, okay? The, the key is the left bank, because what you're doing is 
as you as you slow the rudder the pedal i say i'm saying rudder the, the pedal becomes effective about 115 kilometers an hour then you can start seeing the movement now you can see you know nose is getting down and now with left bank you're, you're basically bleeding to speed you know like uh vertically or horizontally as you're traveling instead of trying to bleed sh speed in a straight line you know in front of you you're bleeding it theory you know theoretically in an in an arc you know and you can arc it like this but good luck landing or you can arc it let's see if we can try it here kind of with a with a nose down attitude oh, i'm gonna hit this let's see let me sit up let me sit up a little better let's get on the field here So you've chopped the throttle, you're coming in, your spot's on the left, and you're like, oh, oh boy, Grumpy, I, I, way too fast. Full left, and now you see that, that left bank, it's swinging your nose down, and it's swinging the tail around. And, and if you can visualize it, it's, it's bleeding speed with a nose down attitude like that, okay? And that's how you do it in tight spots. So let's try this one right here. We'll, we'll chop the throttle late and let's see what happens here. So we just are under a kilometer, oh, 800 meters, 700, six, we're gonna do it at five, 500 meters out. No throttle, coming in hot. Full left pedal, bank, see that speed coming in? Full bank, left bank right there. Full throttle. Okay, it's happening fast, guys, but you just gotta trust me and you gotta practice it. All right, guys, let's talk about uh, picking a landing site again. And uh, one thing I want to focus on is, well, I guess, where not to land to. Try to avoid roads. You know, these are in essence shooting lanes for the enemy. And you get a guy sitting in his house, you could. See you come in, pop on the road, and just zip you with a rocket right down that road, no problem. So what I'm looking for is um, it, it, a couple things. Could be my flight path, protection for the guys, and surrounding structures. So you know, our, our flight path is going to be, I should say, our landing path, I guess, is going to be like a 270 degree turn. You know, you're going to come in, and you're going to wrap it 270 degrees. Or 180. If if you're trying to do a 360, like you're gonna wrap around this building, you're, you're gonna be scrubbing a lot of speed, and you gotta come in a lot faster. If you're going for a 90, you're you're coming in here and you want to land here, you're gonna have to scrub your speed out here, you know, before you do this, because you come around this corner, and you're gonna you're just gonna have a ton of speed, and you try doing like a front bleed flare, um, you're dead, dude. You're dead. It's, it's tough. Easiest 270 degrees, you know, roughly. So you got to think about that. You pick this spot right here. I want to come in on this angle, and like I said, it's decreasing radius, so it's going to tighten up, and you boom, right there. Come in, maybe wrap around this building, boom, right there. But it's going to be decreasing, and you're going to have 270 degrees. It's not going to, you know, you're not going to come out here and start your turn to do 270 degrees to pop there um, unless you really widen it i mean you can, quite honestly you could do damn near anything but to stay consistent you know you're you're picking that as your route you know you don't want too tight because things happen very fast and you got hard to con you know the, the tail rotor is hard to control at high speeds ineffective above 110 kilometers basically too slow you got a wide turn and you're going to be trying to you know bump your throttle just to clear that and you're going to start stalling out and that's that's a sickening feeling when you start st stalling out because you're sitting down so here's here's my thought i'm going to come up this way and i'm going to i'm going to come basically right right over that building probably maybe i'll maybe i'll go for this road right here i'm going to come up stay just on the edge of that building and come right there and we'll see what happens i'll try to talk you through it too um see here we're lining up we're cheating a little bit because we're, we're not coming in at a true yeah, we're coming in on, we're gonna be under a 270 degree turn it's gonna be about 240 uh, full throttle 
Country top level. Offset to the right. We've got a mark to the left. I'm shooting for about 600 uh, meters out to chop the throttle completely. Coming over above these wires. 600 meters and zero throttle. Slight left bank. I'm seeing my spots, seeing my spots. Left pedal. There's the building. Back on the stick, back on the stick. And you can bring it around even farther. There we go. Touchdown. Simple as that, guys. Simple as that. Okay, guys. Well, one thing I want to focus on right now is the, the coordinated aspect of the final phase of the landing. And the coordinated aspect is going to be left pedal and left bank. Only, And when I, when I say left bank, we're holding left bank in the final phases. It's not setting a bank and get and getting off the left bank, okay? Because as you as you near the ground, I'll try to demonstrate here. You know, you got your throttle chopped. You set your bank, little left throttle and left uh, and pull back on the stick. But a, as you slow and you get low, you gotta pull back on the stick and left bank. Left, I'm holding left bank right now. You know what I'm saying? And it's the left bank with the left pedal. It's it's basically wrapping the turn tail high nose down turn it's hard to describe and you, you just got to practice it but if you don't know it to practice it you'll never learn it we try i'll try a little higher maybe that, that might demonstrate a little better so we got full throttle i'll wait till i get up to like, uh, 200 okay i chopped the throttle i'm picking a spot i'm just imaginary spots to my left I'm pulling back on the stick and a little bank Left throttle, or uh, left left pedal, left pedal, left pedal, left pedal, left bank, and then full, th you know, hover or full throttle. You see how that that bank swings it? But if you just do the bank without the left pedal, my, my we'll see what happens. My thought is we're going to be damn near upside down. Start an arc, leave it. Left pedal, left pedal full bank yeah you're looking upside down you're looking upside down that's not gonna work so you, you got to have the left pedal with the left bank in the final stages of the landing early on when you're doing your arc I call it the arc you have your throttle chopped and you just have a bank initiated and I'm using back stick to maintain altitude I'm just pitching my nose up pitching my nose up let's pick let's pick a spot here real quick Do something by the coast. There's a building. Okay, I'm thinking about my landing. I'm going to be coming from this direction, so I want to wrap that way. See that? Okay. Let's dive down, get some speed. 1.1 1. 1 kilometers out. Speed's up, full throttle. Offset to the right. Low to the ground. 600 meters out, zero throttle. Left bank left pedal pull back on the stick little more left bank full left rudder little more left bank left bank pull back on the stick left bank just holding it just holding it half throttle right there level out land it's hard to describe guys but I'm, I'm, I'm holding pressure on the left you know I'm not I'm not punching it to left with the bank and letting it go I'm holding pressure with the tail rotor I mean, you could do it if you try to do it in the sky. You're gonna roll right over because your tail rotor becomes ineffective. But what I'll do is, as I'm calling out, check my speeds, guys, and check my distance. You know, I'm not looking at that, but that that'll give you indicators mentally, I guess, as when I'm holding pressure. And I'll say left, left stick pressure, left pedal. You know, left pedal basically just throw it, throw it on full and leave it. Quite honestly, that's that's the easiest way, especially when you're when you're getting really close. See if I can do it here. Still at full throttle. Zero throttle. Slight arc. Pulling back on the stick. Full left pedal. Back on the stick. Back on the stick. Left left bank. Holding left bank. Pulling back harder. Pulling back harder. Throttle, throttle, throttle. Hover. So the the, the key takeaways is full left pedal and holding left bank 
pressure. And when I say pressure, stick pressure. Um, I'm probably I'm probably at a third stick pressure. No, you you can get really aggressive at speeds to scrub, and your your nose is darn near vertical. These that's the keys right there, guys. You know, the genie's out the bottle. You know, who's going to take this information and run with it? For practice. I'll tell you this. I had um, it took about 200. 200 hours of flying before I got comfortable with the controls. Now, I wasn't consistent, but I was comfortable enough to where, okay, I, I knew I knew what was doing what, I guess, and that's the key. See, look at this, you know, half throttle, punch it up, you know. But at about 200 hours, I could bring guys in, I could pick points, and I, I could probably... You know, I could I could land close. Now it might have been sloppy and choppy, but I I had the principles down. You know, I, I had the principles down. I just had to refine it. You know, um, that's pretty much it. You know, it, it's it's left bank, left pedal, zero throttle, and if you can get your hover set, and I say hover, you you know the, the position of your throttle to initiate a hover. I think those are the, the, the key aspects of it. The, the left turn is key because you can see out the left window, you know, the opening there. You try doing that on the right, you've got a big section that's obscured. I mean, and quite honestly, you, you, if, you can, if you can get it to where you, you're predicting doing a left-hand turn, you, you're getting good. No, let me try or a right-hand turn, I'm sorry. Let me try right-hand turn here. Zero throttle left or uh, right pedal full right pedal right bank pull back on the stick pull back on the stick pull back on the stick right bank right bank right bank right bank level out half throttle not bad I, I i don't practice it i should you know shame on me i'm not gonna hide that fact let me do it let me do a forward a forward bleed flare now that's all they teach on youtube and unless you got track IR, you got to have X-ray vision, in my opinion. Let's let's try that method. And I, you know, I've seen it talked. You know, a kilometer out, chop your throttle, bleed your flare. You know, pull back on the stick. Okay, let's see what happens when I try doing that, and 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 maintain a view and maintain a low low attitude. So I'm at 700. I'm coming up short. Let me just do it right here. 500. 400 pulling back on the stick pulling back on the stick I'm climbing I'm climbing that ain't working let me just take it long let's see what happens here we go sitting duck nice and straight okay here yeah, see it look at now, now you're, you're guesstimating the ground that is that is so difficult in my opinion let me go out and do a long long hot run here because I feel like a sitting duck doing that and every time you, you pull that stick back, you're trying to bleed speed. My, my, you know, I, I know I'm rising up a little bit. And yeah. It, you know, can you do it? Yeah. Is it tactical? No. Is it consistent? No. You know, at, at least when I got that point on the map, I can I can make adjustments to compensate for speed or altitude. So here we are. Zero throttle. Let's, let's land right on that point, guys. Pulling back my stick, way too much speed. I'm trying to drop altitude. Yeah, I overshot that one. Well, it's not lying in the water. Let's try for the beach. Okay, pulling back on the stick. Pulling back on the stick, back on the stick, back on the stick. Half throttle. Yeah, and here's the other problem with that bleed flare, the forward bleed flare. Your tail is exposed. That, that happened just now. My tail hit the ground. And that, that's what you got to look forward to doing that. With the uh, decreasing radius combat landing that I that I just showed you, your tail is high and dry. And guys that fly, if you touch that tail to a tree branch, it's gone. This this is case in point why you do not want to do the forward bleed flare. Now I'm talking about the hummingbird. Uh, other helicopters are set up for it. This one. This one isn't meant for that. I mean, that's fine coming in for a landing at the spawn. 
after you've uh, repaired at the helipad, whatever. Um, I, why would you do that in, in priority? Ao, you're a sitting duck. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I want to touch on just one final time, the key points. I was just flying around Altus right now, but uh, truly the key points are when to cut the speed, and that's, you know, if you're flying downhill, like at Kavala, you chop it at 700 meters. Flat level LZ, uh, 600 meters. If you're flying to an LZ that's up a hill, up a rise, 500 meters. These are just ballpark numbers, but you, you get the idea. The, the, other, the other key factors is the coordinated turn at the final stages of the landing. And by coordinated is the, the left pedal, left roll. And a, as your uh, helicopter slows, you know, you can hold pressure to the left roll. You know, here it's just set. I'm pulling back on the stick just to maintain altitude. As the helicopter slows and the tail rotor becomes effective, then I hold pressure to the left roll. You see that? And that's that's the key. Now, obviously, I was up higher too, and, and and a nose down attitude. But the combination of the left pedal and the left roll, you know, you're kind of getting this that movement right there at the slower speeds, and that's how you wrap the turn. You know, right there. That's all left roll and or right roll. I'm sorry, but that's how you finish, finish the landing. You know, it's you you gotta you gotta do both left pedal and left roll to maintain a fairly flat attitude and land. Okay, so like, you know, just pulling back on the stick, left pedal, left pedal, left pedal left roll left roll power without that well there goes my, my tail rotor without that without that left roll you don't do that all right guys so you've watched a video you've got the techniques written on paper but ready to practice them how do you practice them go to the eden map pick a spot when you first start pick on the edge of the maps pick in spots where you're you're going to be coming from so I, I'm at the airport I'm coming this way I want to do my wraps you know left turns over on this side so just pick a spot out here you're kind of, you're, you're away from multiple buildings but be near a building I mean Quite honestly, just pick it in the center of the field when you're first starting out, and then uh, take off and, and head there. You know, and, and mentally, you know, you get your picture drawn. You're in a field, so it, it's going to be simple. You're wide open area, but let's look at it. We're on a we're on a flat LZ. Let's remind ourselves we want to cut our throttle 600 meters out. You, we want to kick a left bank and just set it there, and then use back. Uh, cyclic to maintain altitude. Um, throw in, you know, some left pedal full by the time you're a couple hundred out, hundred yards out. Here we go. Zero throttle, left bank, back pressure, back pressure. A little bit more left bank to left pedal, left pedal, full left pedal, left bank pressure, back pressure, left bank, left bank, half throttle. Just like that. Now, the final stage is you've basically the last 50 yards, you've got full left pedal, left left bank, and I, I would say, you know, like if I've got if I've got, you know, a hundred percent movement to left, I'm using thirty percent and then pulling back on the stick, probably around thirty percent. Now you pull back harder on the stick, it's gonna shorten it's gonna shorten the LZ. So if, if you look like you're overshooting it, pull back hard. If you look like you're coming up short, push forward on the stick. Um, the amount of bank is consistent to maintain, you know, um, an upright position as you're flying. So then what I would do, I, I'd spend hours doing this. I picked one spot and landed. I want to pick a spot on the map where I can get up to, to full flight speed. So I'm going to come over to, the, to this area. I'll be coming southbound. I'm going to be doing a left turn 
So let's see if we can park it somewhere over here. We're, you know, theoretically, we have to come around this building or over the top. And park it right there. You can park it out farther too. You know, let's play safe. Let's go there. So I got my spot picked out. I can see it on my right. There it is. Full throttle. Get the wire height. I see some wires up ahead. Offset my heli to the right of the landing uh, spot. 600 meters, I'm going to chop, thro chop throttle. Got zero throttle. Left bank, hold it. Back stick to maintain altitude. Left pedal, full left pedal. Back stick, left bank, left bank, left bank, hard left bank, hard back, half throttle. So that's what I'm doing right there, guys. Let's do one more. I'm gonna wrap it up. Let's try over here. Okay, so th some things to consider. We're landing on cement, so we gotta be extra soft. And other than that, it's gonna be about 180 degrees. So here's what happens. If, we, if I come in hot and I'm at altitude, where if I do 180, I'm still too high, I'm looking at the building. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin it to win it. And what, what I mean by that is I'm going to be full left pedal and, and left bank. And I'm going to corkscrew right over that spot because I, I can't go forward anymore. So you, if, you, if you see someone corkscrewing, they, they probably misjudged your landing. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm probably going to carry too much speed in to do 180 because I'm in S it's coming down and I'm going to wrap in. It just happens. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a 270. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna come in like this. I'm gonna spin it. I I might I might even do a 360, but I'm just gonna spin it to win it. So let's uh, take off here, build our speed up. Got our point coming around. Level up. Yeah, we got 220. 30 okay same thing it, it's fairly level it's I know it's dropping down and I could get away with chopping uh, earlier but I'll go 600 600 uh, throttles all the way down little left bank back pressure left pedal left pedal back pressure spin it to win it spin it to win it right there soft on the concrete so coming in too fast to do the 180 you just spin it to win it and you'll bleed your speed and it'll keep you from drifting into that that's it guys sorry it was so long uh, throw some comments down let me know what you guys think let me know what you use if, if you're an experienced pilot I want to I want to know what you're doing I you know I've, I've tried all the others you know the controllers joysticks and stuff and this for me the the RC transmitter was the easiest and uh, if you've got comments on uh, if anything worked or didn't work, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. And check out my other videos. I got some highlight videos of my uh, combat landings. And, and just as you look at those videos, think about what I was doing, what I just uh, taught you. They're, they're in essence all left-hand combat landings. And um, you can see my spots. You know, I, I, try, to, I try to maintain high speed precision. You know and sometimes you're over a field and you don't get the the feel for the speed but if you get over a town you know you can you can feel it and then you're at rooftop level flying over town you know and you're, you're doing 170 for that matter it feels so fast you know see look at that that's so smooth that's it guys let me know have a good one